Hey everybody, this video was filmed before we were hit by a relentless avalanche of pre nam announcements which included whatever this is. As a result, some parts of this episode didn't age so well. Thank you for your understanding. Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. While other big old music tech manufacturers are still present in our daily lives, Yamaha seems to have left the synth community behind in order to focus on motorcycle grand piano workstation hybrids for artists who actually make music. Today we are going to talk about Reface DX. This FM synthesizer was Yamaha's 2015 attempt to capitalize on the heritage of the legendary DX7 known for its iconically cheesy 80s sound and unintuitive workflow by implementing a less powerful synth engine and making the UI even worse. At the first glance, Reface DX is ticking all the That's the cutest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Boxes, a minuscule keybed, lets you access a 4 operator FM engine, Reminiscent of low-budget classics like the DX100. While most of the original instruments offered only one fader for controlling a wide array of complex parameters, Yamaha removed any form of tactile feedback from the programming process whatsoever by introducing four retro-futuristic multi-touch sliders. These 80s sci-fi B-movie style controls always relate to the parameters shown on the display and require you to flick, tap, tap hold, which is elaborately described in the manual and a bit out of my comfort zone. Parameters can be tweaked in real time. The FM engine with its 12 algorithms is as basic as they come. 8 voices of polyphony are not exactly generous as are the 32 slots of patch memory. It does come with a feedback parameter per operator though which allows for more complex basic waveforms. I didn't find a way to modulate these parameters. Speaking of modulation, the display is really helpful for programming the rather old school 4 stage envelope generators. There are pitch envelopes and the syncable LFO can be routed to every operator individually. Having dedicated buttons for the most important parameters is much appreciated and a maximum menu diving depth of 4 layers isn't so bad for a synth like this especially given the respectable key scaling options. In contrast to most of its vintage progenitors, the little keyboard comes with a great sounding FX section allowing for two bread and butter algorithms at a time. Yamaha included a barely usable MIDI looper suffering from acute amnesia as soon as you turn off the instrument. It will do the trick for temporarily capturing a spark of musical genius. Connectivity and general feature set are mixed bag. I could totally live without the internal speakers, which fortunately can be turned off. There's a battery compartment, full-sized stereo jacks for the main outputs are nice, but the proprietary MIDI to what looks like SVHS adapter is a total PITA. You can hook up a sustain pedal and external jam track devices and the pitch band 
volume and octave switch are adorable. Yamaha was able to strike a balance between classic DX aesthetics and upscale Casio home keyboard design and build quality is adequate which should be expected given the self-confident price tag. Thanks to Klangfarbe for lending me one of their floor models. Releasing an original DX synth at the height of the 2010s FM revival was a no-brainer. Can the little Yamaha still hold up in face of the countless roided up FM powerhouses brought to the market by its competitors? You have already heard Reface DX in today's intro tune. Ah, the beauty of simple FM synthesis. Let's start this nice and easy with some classic sounds we know and love. The overall tone is clean and hi-fi, reminiscent of other modern instruments like Digitone. It is missing the well-thought-out UI and versatile sound design goodies though. Speaking of which, I wanna know if the touch sliders are any good for live tweaking. <laughs> convinced. Sure, the interface allows for adjusting multiple parameters simultaneously, but for me personally it's a step backwards from the aforementioned 1985 DX100. This isn't necessarily a deal breaker in a studio situation. Time to dive a little deeper in, thanks Yamaha for releasing the most stylish Sega Genesis sound chip emulator of all time, hilarious Hedgehog Hub. Yamaha's Reface range is a relic of simpler times when the market for miniaturized synths wasn't as oversaturated as it is now. While its non-FM siblings combine a spouse-friendly form factor with extreme ease of use, a DX-style tone generator by nature cannot be dumped down as much as a VA or PM instrument, which is more of a curse than a blessing. Casual synth enjoyers will still be overwhelmed by the complexity of FM in general, while seasoned pros might be longing for more powerful engines or the patina of an 80s original. Reface DX sounds great, but pales in light of the feature set and UI approach of more recent FM gimmicks. It is, however, the perfect keyboard for covering Danger Zone in a minimalist downtown apartment on cranked Bose headphones after drinking a bottle of sake. Thanks for watching and see you next time! Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode, feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show.